What is your latest software development project? What code are you writing? And I have to ask, what code is ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot writing? For this video, I've set up a folder with a couple different projects. Some programming projects that I've been working on, hey, some software development and coding here for cool music, for the doctor's database, maybe some file transfer work or a chemistry project. And I could open these all up. There may be some PHP code, Oh, a couple different instances where I am using a little database in the mix, maybe Python. Hey, an application with some shell scripts to get things staged and a Python script to fire up the action here and more and more of the same. Now say that I could work on those software development projects in my IDE or integrated development environment, just simple Visual Studio code. And I've got one of these projects open here. I've got the cool music and this offers a couple different pages that you can go visit to listen to cool music. That's the gist. Hey, maybe a YouTube link. Oh, maybe some little lo-fi girl, a video game music or songs, stuff to put you to sleep. Neat, cheesy stuff. Here is the app in action. There's not much to it. Hey, maybe you wanted to dig into different pages, different songs, different things that you could listen to for some cool music. Now, here's the thing. Say that I'm a developer or whatever, maybe, hey, working against the clock, trying to chase deadlines, and I want to write code fast. So I'll ask, chat at GPT, your GitHub Copilot, just to spit together some syntax for me. Say that I'm just working in my project and I'll create a new file, maybe a page loader or something like that, loader.php, and I could just simply use GitHub Copilot that I have gotten set up and integrated within my Visual Studio Code development environment. So I could just simply hit Control I and then say, hey, let's say include whatever page or file that is specified by the user user's navigation provided by a get parameter present in the URL or address bar. Now let's see if GitHub Copilot could just churn out any code, save some time, hey, maybe slap some syntax in that I could copy and paste, work with it here in the editor, and this is wild. Because take a look, it's just going to grab whatever page that's provided by that get parameter, and if it doesn't exist, hey, it's just an empty string, but it will then include the specified file. Hey, if it's not empty, if it is provided, then it will just include that page right away into that output. Now, if I were to save this file, look, I've introduced a vulnerability into my application. This syntax, this code opens the door for local file inclusion, where any threat actor, I don't know, any adversary, even honestly, any user could just navigate to any file that they wanted to on the server, hosting this website and web app, and then pull down anything they want. Let me show you this in action here, because I can go back to our application, again, click whatever I wanted to for any of these different pages. But if I were to browse to this new page that I created, loader.php, granted, GitHub Copilot created it, there's nothing here that's rendered right away. But now I could supply with the question mark to specify some get parameters, this page variable being set to whatever I want, right? Hey, maybe the uh, relax.php in that case, the page to render the relax music or something for chill or something for sleep or something for games. But look, that gives me basically whatever control I want to be able to just reach anything on that file system. Like it's a Linux based system, so I could maybe read the etc. hosts file and that renders exactly, hey, what I have staged and set up in my etc. host file. Same thing for etc. password. If I were to supply that in my URL and that page that I wanted to navigate to, that is just the local file inclusion vulnerability that GitHub Copilot just slapped into my application. But look, I know that this is a balancing act because we'd like to be able to rapidly generate code, but it would be really nice if that were secure alongside it. So what we could do is sort of pair that with maybe some secure code analyzer. Hey, something that can take a look at our syntax and find vulnerabilities in a streamlined and easy way. And that is something that Sneak can do. You might have already noticed, but over in my Visual Studio Code IDE, I do have the Sneak plugin installed, and that has already dug up a couple different vulnerabilities. And it's even showing me, if I zoom in here, that specific little squiggly red line to say, look, this is file inclusion. Sneak is telling me right away, hey, 
big priority here. We should probably dig into this because it has the capability to do some damage. It tells you honestly everything, which is pretty slick. Like if I go take a look at this results here and uh, I'll have to move my face, take a look. File inclusion with a big potential priority and CWE as a weakness here. Unsanitized input from an HTTP parameter, given this page, flows right into that function to call to include. That is an unvalidated, unsanitized, and trusted, just blindly, whatever the user supplies as something that might be uh, weaponized and abused. Now, let me be totally straight up here. I already had some potential vulnerabilities in other code snippets here. If I actually drill down into my index.php, you might have noticed it in the URL as we were interacting with the application here, but this already does some weakness, some mishap, some misconfiguration vulnerability where I just naturally include other pages. And that is a vulnerability given in the application. But GitHub Copilot or ChatGPT or whatever other artificial intelligence AI we just sort of slap into our developer workflow here, it will look into the other files or code that we have in our project. Other tabs open inside of our Visual Studio Code editor, our IDE, and then it'll use that as a little bit of a baseline or some inspiration. Hey, use that to kind of suggest and then offer new code. And whether or not that code is vulnerable or not, you're opening the door for some other weaknesses or misconfigurations and issues to enter your applications. But Sneak, one of those awesome secure code analyzers, is totally acknowledging of this and trying to get ahead of it. They're asking the questions like, look, can artificial intelligence write secure code? Can ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot really come to the rescue here? Well, Sometimes you kind of have to put these two side by side and let Sneak save the day because Copilot may very well just introduce more vulnerabilities in your code and projects. They dig into this in a lot of the recent writings and blog posts, but look, I just showed you the case for local file inclusion, but that could totally be cross-site scripting or path traversal or SQL injection or prototype pollution, remote code execution, it could be anything. So when we ask the question, can AI write secure code? Yeah, sure, maybe, sometimes, but more often than not, it tends to make mistakes even just based off of the training data that it has, which is from us, from people, from developers and folks that might make mistakes where we're concatenating inputs to SQL database queries or just making the problem worse. Honestly, I think the best recommendation is letting these two play side by side. Like, hey, have GitHub Copilot, have ChatGPT, whatever AI tool that you want, because I know that is a convenience and it is phenomenal and nice to be able to, hey, just churn out code. But we gotta make sure that it's secure, so let Sneak do that hard work for you. Let me go ahead and open up another folder for maybe our doctor's database. I don't know, maybe some medical stuff in the mix. We can pull this in. Now this uses is a database here. We've got a Docker file, we've got a SQL schema, and hey, Sneak wants to go ahead and work with it. I'm totally cool with you letting you uh, do it here. But look, if I just open this up right away, it's already finding some vulnerabilities here in my index.php. Oh, tons of these. Cross-site scripting. Okay, that's a little bit of a mess. SQL injection, of course. Use of hard-coded something. Credentials in that case. Whoops. Can I actually have GitHub Copilot maybe clean this code? Uh, we know that, hey, Sneak found, whoops, a MySQL query based off of our concatenated input here. You can see that present with MySQL injection. Can I just ask, hey, GitHub Copilot, can you clean this code? Let me run that. Select from semantics where like input, ooh, no. Uh, that made a couple differences where it didn't do anything different. Oh, no, here we go. Okay, it's still getting our input based off of the post where it will continue to concatenate these. So it's not making any changes from my security weakness of potential SQL injection and will just blindly accept and move on. Whoops. Okay, it didn't do anything different. Now, if I save this, of course, sneak over on the side is gonna be saying, hey, look, there's still vulnerabilities here and maybe we could add a little bit more capability. Let me see if I could just zoom out all all the way here and let me copy everything and then just say and ask GitHub Copilot, add functionality to allow the user to sort the results returned by the database with a select option to 
either be ascending or descending and appropriately handle that within our SQL statements. Okay, fingers crossed it'll be able to make sense out of that and let's see if it'll add that capability for one thing, whether or not that works and whether or not it's secure. Let's see, what do we got here? Okay, so we've got a sort order being added with a couple different options. That looks good to me. That is the HTML that I want. Add functionality where we now retrieve the sort order from our post request and it still concatenates input <laughs> and it concatenates our sort order. So phenomenal, it has just propagated the vulnerability even more. <laughs> Here you can see still the period PHP syntax to concatenate those, add functionality. Yeah, it just, it, it just does that now. <laughs> this is our doctor database, by the way. Hey, our application up and running. We can see everything that might be present in the database. Maybe we wanted to search for a specific word like doctor or syringe or whatever. That will return those words. Of course, hey, querying that as you saw. But look, there's nothing stopping us from just adding maybe, oh sure, the word doctor, a regular data, but then tricking the database for with some code, like, oh, an or one equals one. Hey, return everything, whatever query, that will return everything. And what's to stop us from doing a little bit more? Hey, maybe pulling some other data with a union select, we could grab, oh, union select one, or I don't know, just a bunch of ones to prove and see that at the very end of the results, looks like that's provided here. We could even query some things from the database, like the version that's set up here or the user or pull things out of different tables and totally pull down, dump the database out as whatever ill-intended actor we wanted. The thing is, GitHub Copilot wasn't really doing us any favors. In fact, it made it worse and made this even more vulnerable with new opportunities for SQL injection. Sneak is still cruising along saying, look, you've got SQL injection and stuff that you gotta fix. Now I know some of you might be groaning and rolling your eyes like, okay, look, it's PHP. It's just gonna be weird and wild and wacky to begin with. Hey, whatever stereotype, look, okay, fine. Let's move into something maybe like a Python Flask application. I could open up the file transfer one that is replicated of like the move it transfer uh, vulnerability and that past CVE and exploitation. I don't think we need to dig into all of that, but the chemistry project one might give us even a little bit more breadcrumbs and things to discuss when we're chatting about the security of our software here. Again, Sneak will want to have a little bit more capability in the mix, so we'll let that be a trusted folder. And let's see if it can dig into anything. Oh, already found finding some stuff in the requirements here. And this is peculiar because this is stuff that like GitHub Copilot or ChatGBT might not even have context of. Like they're not gonna be looking at your dependencies or other open source libraries unless you explicitly tell it to, which you'd need to do. And then at the very same, it might not even know. So can I try that? Look, okay, this is just a total shot in the dark, but let me see. Hey, GitHub Copilot, are these dependencies safe and secure? And maybe that won't write code for me here, but uh, will that make any changes? I'm curious, I might have to open up chat. Okay, uh, yep, AI assistant doesn't know. Check out the documentation, really appreciate that. And view in chat would just bring that open just as well. So appreciate the nothing provided there. And I, I don't mean to be pointing it in a bad light. Uh, I just want to acknowledge where things might work well and might not work well. So Sneak is already seeing, hey, this version of Click has a couple gimmicks and gotchas to it. Information exposure, uh, maybe regular expressions, maybe some SQL injection, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's see what else we have here. Cause our source code includes our app.py. What is an app? Okay, the very same. Maybe Maybe we just bundled that up uh, to distribute and deliver the application. But we got a couple gimmicks in here. Can I go see what is wrong with this? What does Sneak say? If I actually go take a look at Sneak, what are you tracking here? Other than the open source security that we're seeing in the requirements.txt, which clues us into a lot of really good stuff. Flask, maybe an old version, SQL Alchemy, maybe an old version, lots of Jinja mishaps. And granted, we have to see if that's appropriate in context, but that gives us a little bit more info to run with. And app.py certainly has some weaknesses here. Oh, we just simple SQL injection one more time. 
But why would that be? Sneak again, saving the day, because it clues us in on every component here. Hey, input from a web form, so just our post request for our search or order parameters, are getting passed into the SQL Alchemy text variable, or that function call here, with the order by syntax there, and that could be abused. This is actually one that could probably be taken with a little bit more context that GitHub Copilot or ChatGPT would probably just completely gloss over. We could ask, right, look, here, let me control I that one more time. Are there any security vulnerabilities in this code? See if I can run that. Okay, based on the provided code, there are a few potential security vulnerabilities. Yep, SQL injection. Doesn't give me a whole lot more information. Uh, <laughs> you can see it might read flag.tech in some cases, uh, but SQL injection doesn't tell me where or what or how. So I appreciate Sneak's input there more. And actually this gimmick with the SQL Alchemy rendition is specific to that group by an order by function call. This is exactly what I wanted to target in this application, knowing, look, I'm intentionally making this vulnerable. It's a capture the flag challenge, full disclosure. But look, CVE 2019, that is specific to those function calls. And GitHub Copilot didn't know that. ChatGPT didn't know that. So again, I, I don't I don't mean to be throwing shade, but I think it is great when we can put these two superpowers together and let them work in a synchronized harmony, right? Could we do this for that other move it transfer one? I'm curious what that would just dig up. Like I just kind of genuinely am curious what Sneak would say on that and if GitHub Copilot would have any info here. Let's see if that file transfer one, if we open that folder, Sneak might be able to drill down into what might be vulnerabilities here. Let me see Sneak in action. Yep, we'll go ahead and trust the folders. It'll do its thing. Sneak found no issues for configurations, so I'm looking good on that. File transfer, open source. Is there any issues here? Maybe not specifically for the open source version, but we do get some path traversal. Ooh, that's interesting. I don't think I even was tracking that one. <laughs> like I made this, I wrote this, and I was not following the send file gimmick. Unsanitized input from the file name that we specify flows into send file where it is used as the path. Ooh, you might be right. That could do some damage. <laughs> All right, what else do we got? SQL injection, of course, that is actually intended. We did want to include a uh, accidental little mishap for execute script. Again, this was to replicate the move it transfer exploitation in that CVE back in the day there. Deserialization is exactly the same with Python pickle library, and that's tracking it all the same. Uh, we could ask GitHub Copilot to see, hey, are you seeing the same? Let me go ahead and do that just as well, or we could just give all this code to chat GPT. And let me see if it'll give me just as much detail or if it'll even find it to begin with. Like I could show you the solve script. Again, full disclosure, this is a capture the flag challenge that I'm just simulating as software that I wrote knowing that it has issues. But like, look, let me show you, I'll get into Kali. This is the transfer application here. I could go ahead and open our solve.py script. This is simply, hey, going to reach the page with a pickle RCE usual payload for executing uh, and beating up a lot of deserialization in Python. SQL injection does a little bit of a gimmick where spaces are not allowed, but you might still be able to manipulate that and then do some insert into active sessions because of the SQL injection, put that in, get an auth bypass, and then stage a file that could be deserialized and run remote code execution. So, okay, we have this big app. Let me see if ChatGBT could figure that out just as well. And what details will it give me? I have have this Python code for a Flask web application. Is this code secure? Are there any vulnerabilities? And I will go ahead and paste in all of this syntax here. And with that, we can go ahead and ask, what do you think, ChatGPT? This Python Flask application contains several security issues and bad practices that could lead to vulnerabilities. Here's the analysis of the main issues. Application is vulnerable to SQL injection in multiple places. For example, user loader and before request using string formatting to include user input could maybe put that into SQL queries directly without sanitization or parameterized queries. Yeah, okay. Totally 
totally valid. Execute script. Okay, I'm glad they harped in on that because execute script for a query execution is a component that would ultimately lead to that SQL injection for real. Insecure password handling, that's fine. It is a critical security flaw, but again, for the sake of our, hey, demonstration education, that was kind of part of the gimmick. Pickle for file serialization, yes, that is our actual remote code execution vector. And the lack of input sanitization is a big one because the DB clean function attempts to sanitize input, but it's not really effective or secure because it's just going to be bypassed with you manipulating spaces and representing them as comments like we saw in the solve script. Proper sanitization ultimately relies on parameterized queries using secure methods provided by the database driver. Digs into a couple others here, but doesn't tell you everything that is uh, an issue all the way down to like the line number and the specific characters in that code piece. And the recommendations are just that. They're just talk and recommendations. While Sneak could slap together a fix and a PR and then you could be off to the races and back in action here. So again, look, I wanna drive the point home. ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot and whatever AI, artificial intelligence, whatever, LLM, machine learning, I don't care. It is a great thing. The innovation, the technology, the research, that what could come from it is super duper cool, but I think we can keep it in check with some of the other tooling and hey, some of the other solutions that we know work really stinking well. And Sneak is doing an awesome job saving the day on that front. And look, whether you're going up against some capture the flag challenge, looking for vulnerabilities, or you're writing your own code, applications, projects, real genuine software that you're gonna ship and put in production, AI generated code, might not be what you need to put in there, or at least gut check that, have it running alongside, synchronized and in harmony with a SaaS tool or source code analyzer and check like this. I love Sneak and all the incredible stuff that they do. And look, they're really getting smart and sharp on this, where you've got artificial intelligence working together and sort of a hybrid model. They've got this Sneak Deep Code AI that does some really cool stuff. And seriously, it's putting these two together so you can get fast code generated by AI, easy for you, but secure and safe. With that, I am gonna get off my soapbox. I'm so sorry that I was rambling and ranting for this one, but I think it is worthwhile and important for you, especially if you write code for your job. Needless to say, thank you so much to Sneak for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you for tuning in, listening, and watching, and letting me ramble and rant for a little bit. If you enjoyed this video, and hey, I'd love to know your experience. If you've got some other case study, some sweet stories with ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot, let me know. I'd love to see that in the comments, but please do all those YouTube algorithm things like, comment, subscribe, and hey, seriously, give Sneak a try. Slap it into your IDE and then find and fix vulnerabilities alongside GitHub Copilot and ChatGPT, whatever. It's got to be working together. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.